Caribbean Offshore Powerboat Championships. The Carib Great Race. And here are your hosts, Roger Pickett and Jay Harrison. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the sunny island of Trinidad. We're here with the Carib Great Race. And I'll tell you, this is a super show you don't want to miss. All the most powerful boats in the region are assembled here at the Trinidad and Tobago Yacht Club. You want to talk five-star? Here it is, not only on the mechanical side of the fence, Thumbs up by the race team says final preparation getting underway, but let's have a look at the heat listings. In heat one, our Pierogan Pleasure Division at a max speed of 40 miles per hour, we have Intense High, Voluntad, Hero 2, and JOM. Also in heat one, the Pleasure Sports Division at a max speed of 55 miles per hour, we have Trans Brokerage 1, Extreme Measures, and Outrageous. In Heat 2, our Modified Sports Division at a max speed of 70 miles per hour, we have Candyman, Bico Blaze, Hero 3, Wright Formula, Alien, Esso Special Effects, Wolverine X, and Mobile. In Heat 3, our Superboat Light and Super Modified Divisions with a max speed of 95 miles per hour, we have Rage and White Heat 3. And in Heat 4, our Modified Max Division with a max speed of 120 miles per hour, we have Bico 3 and the current champion, Mr. Solo. Race preparation always key, especially on 100 nautical miles of Atlantic Ocean race course. But let's not forget the behind-the-scenes festivities. We'll throw it down to Andre Krishlow right now and see what's going on. Thanks, Ice. Well, you know where we at. We're right next to the Iceman's boat, Candyman, and it's sweet like that. This is how we usually roll here in Trinidad with the Iceman and the Candyman crew. Take a look at this. Well, thanks, Andre. I'll tell you, it's hot down here. Not only with boats, but with the chicks. The Iceman's pick. And wherever you got these awesome race boats, you always got some awesome-looking women. And that's what I love about the Carib Great Race. And a good-looking team there. Team Candyman, let's see how they do. A big favorite on the island is the Tardo family. Victor, Robert, and Winston, over 30 years, undisputed champions in their class, and we'll see what they do today. Alien, what an awesome ride there, but here's what 100 nautical miles of Atlantic Ocean looks like. The boats are going to go eastbound, past the center of town, Port of Spain, through the Bocas and the Dragon's Mouth, and follow the grueling North Shore. Into Maracas Bay, more North Shore action. Now, there's a lot of water current here. They're going to be doing a sharp 90 at Grand Rivere, and this is where it's pedal to the metal across the Atlantic Ocean. They're going to do two loops in the finish area, and that's going to pick out today's winner. But right now, we're in the milling area. Heat number one getting underway. Special thanks going out to the Coast Guard, all the government services that are involved, Department of Natural Resources, etc. This is the gathering area of all the boats. They're coming in from various marinas around the island. There's a great little on-shot look out of Mr. Solo. Four heats. We start off with our slower boats first let them get underway and then heat number two will step it up to the next horsepower division heat three and then we release the hounds as the unlimited bus loose with over two thousand horsepower at the back door jason what can you tell us about the milling area and the start of the race Due to the four heat start, that means at some point in the race there's going to be a bottleneck and a traffic jam on the North Shore where they're all going to start passing each other. The green flag is down, Jason. The Carib Great Race is now underway and heat number one heading eastbound towards Port of Spain and the Trinidad and Tobago Yacht Club. You can see Trans Brokerage 1 getting a good start off the line followed by intense high, extreme measures, outrageous, hero two, and J-O-M there on the far right. The important thing is with 100 nautical miles in front of you, you don't got to go crazy right off the line. And that's what a lot of these teams, that's a big part of the strategy. If you're just hard on the gas, now you can see the water conditions are ideal here. Later on in the show when the big MTI catamarans bust loose at a buck 20, they love this type of action. A slight chop. Here we are at the farthest eastern part of the race course, downtown Trinidad, Port of Spain, taking our first marker boy. We're circle around this and head back westbound towards the starting area. 
great shot here of D25. Team Outrageous as they're slightly ahead of Team Trans Brokerage 1 following closely behind going 49, 50 miles per hour. Well, that's what we were saying earlier, Jason, and obviously you know how your boat's performing. Here we are, a, a great helicopter shot. This film shoot has over 40 cameras. There's 20 onboard cameras, five helmet cams. We have every angle of this race covered, and we're bringing it right into your living room. We hope you enjoy the package here. Here's a great shot of Extreme Measures just coming around the marker, boy. You got 100 miles in front of you, so what's the rush, Charlie? Cutting that corner very, very sharply at about 50 miles an hour. What is key with the various water conditions here is what kind of props you're actually using on your boat. If you have the wrong pitch prop, you can find yourself in trouble. Let's throw it to our tech specialist, get a little more information. Okay, fine size. We're talking prop rotation here. This is known as an outward rotation choice for these outboards. What this does is it offers a little more bite and it gives you a bit of handling in that when the boat rolls to the side, there's more water hitting the flat side of the prop blade. That gives a little bit extra bite, which is needed uh, and preferred actually for handling, not necessarily for rough water, but for cornering and you know uh, going around courses. The outward rotation is usually the choice of rotation for twin engine installations. It's back to you, Ice. Okay, thanks, Andre. Well, you can see just the importance of the props on these boats. P2 in the milling area, and all the boats now congregating. Great team there, Dynamite Right Formula. But here we go, heat number one, now coming in front of the Trinidad and Tobago Yacht Club. Some of the entry-level boats, you can see these are young kids on board, Hero 2, and that's where it all starts. The old man throws you the keys to the uh, little race rocket there in tenth high. I won't tell you what, these guys were puffing earlier on, but we're going to see how they do on the 100-mile course today. They're just passing the Trinidad and Tobago Yacht Club. Jay, what's happening in the milling area? Well, all the boats in Heat 2 are now preparing for the launch. These are the 70-mile-an-hour class, the S-Class Modified Sports. They're all just getting ready because you don't want to miss that starting boat. Here's a little bit of the onboard action you can see from the milling area. The green flag is down, and here we go. Heat number two underway on one side of the course. These guys are clipping it to the far eastern side, and on the south side of that same circuit, it's heat number one working their way back to the starting area. So you can see how we are staggering the race boats. I love these type of shots, and these guys take no prisoners. They're just going to stay like this. A pack of flies, a great shot on board. Candyman, the Iceman's pick, Paul Sabga. In the middle, he is actually steering the boat from the middle of that shot, and on either side, you have a throttle man and a navigator. At the top of the screen there, we got SO Special Effects, Hero 3, Dynamite Right Formula, and Bico Blaze leading the pack. Well, they're all bottlenecked, and there's a nice shot out of Dynamite Right Formula. Uh, the back boat, we'll have a look at that one with our eyes in the sky. It actually has wings on it at the back like an airplane, and when it launches on those big waves, you can see how those wings seem to keep her up a bit. Let's get into our current positions. Heats 1 and 2 are well underway, while Heats 3 and 4 in the milling area ready to go. Stay with us, the Super Boats, 80 miles an hour. Up next, we'll be right back. My name's Roger Piggott, along with Jay Harrison. We're giving you the play-by-play -play on the longest open water race on the planet Earth. That's right, your ears are working. 100 nautical miles of grueling Atlantic Ocean. We're now in the heat, too, as these boats are just passing the Trinidad and Tobago Yacht Club, far eastern part of the race course. You can see Bico Blaze there with a slight advantage over Hero 3 and SO Special Effects. We've got a great shot from our shore cam. Well, I'll tell you, you saw that shot of the helicopter over top of the boats. We want the footage. We're bringing it right into your living room, and we hope you enjoy the show. There's a nice shot of rage. This heavy on the gas. The downdraft from the choppers can cause major problems. Great onboard action here with Candy Band. They're making that far eastern turnabout. There's the marker boy. We gotta be doing 70, 80 miles an hour here, and they're hard 
on the gas. Look at the water conditions. Only if it would stay like that for a hundred miles. No, uh, Lord knows it won't because th at the North Shore, that's when the water chop gets real rough. And that's what the catamarans and the big boys love. Race preparation on a hundred mile course, I'll tell you, you don't want to be using the oars. Let's throw it down to Andre, our tech specialist, and get the inside scoop. All right, thanks, Ice. We're in the back of this boat looking at a tandem installation here. One engine is slightly ahead of the other. That is so that they can facilitate mounting the drives as close as possible to each other. This also pushes the center of mass and gravity of the boat further forward, thereby balancing the boat a lot more. You can use less tabs and less negative trim on the drives. This enhances the running ability of the boat and makes it uh, less uh, tedious to drive in the rope. And this is something that is very, very needed when you're going up on the North Coast for the Carib Great Race. Back to you, guys. Thanks, Andre. Well, great shot here. Hero 3 and Bico Blaze just slightly ahead here. British American Insurance, that's what Bico stands for. That's the uh, children of the CEO. Oh, my God, we got a shot down, and it looks like Richard is pissed as the boat is already down. Now, they can repair the boat with the tools only that you have on board. You cannot have any shore assistance. And here we are, back in the milling area. Heat number three, the Coast Guard doing a wonderful job. All the heat number one boats are now just starting to come by the starting area where they commence their part of the race much, much earlier. Here we go, heats number one and two just coming into the starting area. They're going to be heading to the treacherous North Shore, past those little islands in the background. That's called the Dragon's Mouth, and you watch the air. They're going to start catching when they're hard on the gas and hit that first wall of waves coming in at about six to seven foot seas. We got uh, Voluntan, Hero 2, just rounding out Heat 1. Biko, Blaze, and Hero 3 leading out the pack of Heat 2, uh, just passing the race start now. You can see some of the super dupers just waiting for their kick at the can. A great shot of dynamite right form, Len. I'll tell you, only if we could see the crowds on the beaches. Standing room only, as this is the most popular offshore race in the island of Trinidad. See some of the big ships out there. We're in a port area, and there we go, the mouth of the dragon. And that is where the water conditions are going to change at the drop of the hat. Actually, some boats have taken that first wave so hard they've cracked their hull. SO Extreme Effects just giving her hard on the gas, and everyone is heading towards the dragon's mouth. You can see Team Wolverine X just rounding out Heat 2, following up the pack as they're just entering the Bofas and the dragon's mouth. You can hear the crowd on shore just real excited for the boats as this is the last opportunity that they're going to have to see them before they reach Tobago. Well, we're at the Trinidad and Tobago Yacht Club right now, and hey, there's my friend Candyman pulling their boat back in. It looks like some engine action. The props is what we're looking at here. It's obviously a lower unit situation. This is a diehard team, and I, I feel confident they'll get back into the race. Heats number three and four are now in the milling area. Well, Heats 1 and 2 have just passed the race start and are well on their way through the Bocas and the Dragon's Mouth, but Heats 3 and 4 are taking off when we come back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Carib Great Race, the Caribbean Offshore Championship Series. Heat number 3 taking off. Heat number 2 well into the North Shore action. And as mentioned, you can see the water conditions are stepping up. Heat number two has already caught up to heat number one, and three and four haven't even started the race yet. Here we go, the big super boats, the unlimited, the MTI catamarans. Heat number four is now underway. All boats are on the race course. A key element on board here is what do you do in case of emergency and that boat capsizes? Our technical specialist has the answer. Hey, thanks, Ice. Well, I'm in the tunnel of a catamaran, and uh, it's good for not only generating lift and power boats, but also sheltering from tropical rainstorms. Yeah, well, we're here sheltering, and we're going to take this opportunity to let you know about this, an escape hatch. What this does is it provides another means of egress out of the boat in the unlikely event that it's inverted. 
that's not where you want to be in any boat, inverted that is. However, if we do end up there, things happen in powerboat racing. These guys can get out through the escape hatch located at the bottom of the tunnel here very easily, very safely, and most importantly, very quickly. All right, so that's how they're going to get out if ever you see this boat upside down. So it's back to you now, Ice. Thanks, Andre. Wow, boy, what an education there. Heat number one is now into the bokas, and you can see some of the rough water conditions. It looks like extreme measures, some mechanical problems looking a little slow. This is where the boats are rounding the first point of the island in the dragon's mouth, and they're going to get into the wild chop. It's actually a part of the race where you want to make sure everything's buckled down because you're going to clearly see when they start hitting the Atlantic Ocean swells. Here, the Thunder as C1 rage just hard on the inboards and they're just smoking her around the corner. SO Special Effects doing the wild thing out here and it's just a wonderful race. Conditions today are ideal. Well, so far so good. No major mechanical problems yet as uh, Heat 3 and 4 are actually just making their way to the eastern part of the course as Team Wolverine X is rounding out Heat 2. Well, I know Andre is with Ian Kieser, and that is the crew owner for Dynamite Ride Formula. Let's throw it down to Andre and see what Ian has to say about today's agenda. Uh, thanks, Ice. We have here Ian Kieser. Ian, in the Ride Formula, or oh, sorry, Dynamite Marine Ride Formula. What is going to be your formula for this year's Great Race? Well, same formula like every other year. We always get out there, run our best, win. <laughs> Everybody threatens, but they haven't come up with a pass yet. And I mean, last year has proven it again. We won 2006 High Points Champion, overall champion. Last year we won our class third fastest boat to Tobago also. We in the game. <laughs> there you have it. Ian Kiesa, the right formula in the game for this year's Carib Great Race. It's back to you guys. Thanks, Andre. Well, you can see that heat number four has rounded the far eastern course and listen to the thunder on the Atlantic Ocean. Baiko has a clear advantage, a good onboard shot of Mr. Solo, and that's what 120 nautical miles an hour looks like when you're blowing by someone doing 80. So Heat 4 has already caught up to Heat 3, and they're not even at the start area. So this is about 11 miles from the starting area to that boy right there. And you can already see that the unlimited super boats have caught up in no time. But look how this guy is just trimmed out. And listen to the thunder on the Atlantic Ocean as Bike Oak heavy on the gas now coming into the starting area of the race and heading towards the Bocas. Listen to the ponies there. And this is what the crowd's been waiting for. To hear that thunder, to feel it shake them, and to see those boats close up for the first time. Well, you know, when you go to a nightclub and you feel the bass going through you, you should see what happens when these race puppies are on the gas and blowing by you on the shore. You definitely hear them first, and you don't see them long. 120 miles an hour on the water. Look how smooth Solo is just trimmed out nicely. There's three individuals inside that cockpit. Toyota White Heat, everyone's making their way to the Bocas. Back at the Trinidad and Tobago Yacht Club, it looks like Candyman has got all the kinks worked out in their boat, and they're planning on relaunching. Let's take a good look at the members of Candyman. In the modified sports class at 70 miles per hour, we got Paul Sabga in the driver's seat, Troy Mohammed as our throttle man, and Richard Hosum as the navigator. Well, you can see the sponsorship is key with these race teams and the television broadcast that we're generating worldwide. 46 different countries, two languages, English and Spanish, and these sponsors are just cutting the checks. They love what's going on. What's our current positions, Jay? Well, all heats are now underway. The heats one and two are just entering the North Shore, and heats three and four are entering the Dragon's Mouth. So we'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Care of Grey Race. Roger Piggott here along with Jay Harrison. Play-by-play -play action. ROV Outrageous currently in first place. Trans Brokerage in second. And this is our Heat 1 boats now through the Bocas. And we'll be making that sharp right-hand turn into the North Shore. 
You can see some technical problems on board Extreme Measures, but so far so good. You can see the bobbing and weaving. They're now coming out of the bay and just coming into the treacherous Dragon's Mouth, and you watch the aerials these guys are going to pick up. Michael Blaze in third place, commandeered by Kadra and Brent Branker, currently leading their division in the 70-mile-an-hour class. Well, I'll tell you, so far so good. Steady as she goes, as they're just rounding through the dragon's mouth, they'll be making the sharp turn to the right, and then I have not seen the Atlantic Ocean favorable on these boats in the many years I've been covering it. You got Team JOM there, followed by Intense High, and currently being passed by Team Mobile. Everyone's trying to feel each other out, feel out the water conditions, because no one can anticipate the pounding that that Atlantic Ocean's going to have to offer once they round this. Heat 4 and Team Bike 03 making some grounds there in the Bocas as they're just passing those tiny little islands there in the background. But Iceman, I noticed you and the production crew were scouting out some of the golf courses in the area. What's up? Well, it's uh, all about the International Long Drive Championship Series, and this is where the most powerful long ball hitters on the planet Earth all assemble. Now, we're looking at doing a spectacular event, a world championship event in Trinidad at the Millennium Lakes Golf and Country Club. A great look at uh, Garfield Letman there out of Team Jamaica. We have 16 different countries show up for this event, and the Aussies, man, thunder down under. Safita Pallada just giving that drive heck. And when was the last time you saw someone hit a golf ball over 400 yards? Here's a quick look at some of the countries that would be involved. We're beyond this station with our programming in the future, so look for it. Publicity, we're outrageous. Captain of Team Canada on the rooftop at a Hilton Hotel, hammering the ball at night over two streets, 340 yards away, to hit the grid. You want action live in your face. It's the International Long Drive Championship Series coming to Trinidad, and we're looking for a humdinger out on the golf course. Well, no wonder you brought your golf clubs there, Iceman, but back into race action. We can see Heat 1, the remainder, just making their way through the Bocas. Hero 2 there following up Team Voluntad. Well, you know what? The Heat 1, this is really the entry level to the race. Uh, it's 100 nautical miles. If you're doing 40 miles an hour, you can see that that's two and a half hours if you don't have any boat problems. And that's where you start learning how to do what the C1 rock machine, I'm talking rage, all over you here, just hard on the gas, and there's no way you're going to get the keys to a boat like this without starting off. You remember Bico Blaze earlier on, how efficient they were. Look at this, C1 just charging out there on the Atlantic Ocean. But the Bob and Weave experts on the MTI catamarans giving her heck through the dragon's mouth. And this is where you get a lot of reverb from the engines just bouncing off the shore. This is very, very close to the stone wall. Mr. Solo on board camera look as White Heat Toyota doing the funky chicken and let's throw it down to Andre see what's going on with some engine action. Thanks Ice. We're the back of the boat with a very unique configuration with these drives. These drives in case you haven't noticed are very close together. How do they do this considering the width of one of the engines is twice the width of the drives? Well what they do is a tandem Insulation. You push one engine further forward, run a short drive shaft to this side, while this one stays directly against the transom. What that does, it pushes the weight of the boat forward, gives you a little more balance, and you have more solid water to bite for the props, which provides better push, which is what you need for more speed. And speed is what we need for the Carib Grid Race. It's back to you, Ice. Thanks, Andre. Well said. Well, I'll tell you, Bico Blaze there at the top of your screen. There's a great shot of heat number two. Rage, heavy on the gas. Chadra, our only female driver, 20 race starts. Jay, what can you tell us about it? Bico Blaze in the modified sports class at 70 miles per hour maximum. We've got Chadra Branker and her brother Brett Branker in the throttle man seat. They're 19 and 20 years old, respectively, both university students. Well, I'll tell you, that Chadra, and man, she's eye candy if I've seen any compared to the guys out in these race-modified boats. And here's a great eye in the sky. You can actually 
get a perspective of just how fast. Look at the waves. Brian Branker and Richard Phillips, each in one of those modules there. Big air out on the Atlantic Ocean, intense high, smoke another brother to water. It's gonna get much worse. Team intense high there, the Progan Pleasure Division at 40 miles per hour maximum. We've got the father-son team of Michael Clerk, senior and junior on board. Well, a father-son package, and hang on to your cookies, Dad. You better know what the hell's going on there, as uh, your son is going to be hammering you large in a couple of years for a race rocket. That could cost you a quarter of a million dollars. Here we are. This is what $750,000 looks like, the M7. Yes, we are talking the undisputed champion for the last 13 years, RC Cola, Mr. Solo. We are on board right now, and you can see some of the pounding the Atlantic Ocean is bringing forward in today's agenda. Let's take a good look at Team Rage now. The super modified class at the max speed of 95 miles per hour. In the driver's seat, we got Rayad Shakir, throttle man Jeffrey Simmons, and our navigator Steve Ganny. Well, Rage C1, they are definitely a performance team. This boat has all the action on it. Sombrella is one of their major sponsors. And myself personally, I love the paint job, but look at the V hole just charging it through the Atlantic Ocean. In the modified sports class, 70 miles per hour maximum. We've got Garth Marshall, our driver here. He's been racing 20 plus years. Ian Keyser, the throttle man, been racing even longer, and he's an outboard technician by profession. Well, I'll tell you, outboard technician, he has this thing all dialed in. Dynamite right formula, they have a strong contingency, and I remember Lyman with uh, Ian's wife, they have big cruiser parked over at Tobago and soon as they shut the puppy off here at the end of the race the party starts better known in the islands as Lyman but here's the back boat and you can see some of the pounding that is taking place this is where the boats want to keep a little bit of distance between them taking a look at hero three now in our modified sports division we got hero Boudram the driver and Neil Samaru our throttle man both with tons of experience behind them well, Hero 3 is definitely a great boat to look at. The crowd really enjoy the wings that are on the back. You can see with the wings on the boat, it's almost skimming across the water, barely even touching it. Bico 3 hard on the throttles there, making some headway, just skimming along as well. It looks like all the problems with extreme measures have been worked out, and they're well underway again. Let's take a closer look at who's behind this team. They're in the Pleasure Sports Division at a max speed of 55 miles per hour, commandeered by Jonathan Tardo, our driver at 25 years old, and Justin Keyser, the throttle man, at 16. Hero 3 down for the 8th count, getting a bit of downdraft there, as it looks like Mechanical Prom and Mobile just getting pounded up there by the Atlantic Ocean, and this is where the conditions are intensifying. Mr. Solo, M7, the MTI catamaran, still leading the pack out there. We're on board right now, and you can see Gino Fusco, the navigator, the charioteer in the back seat, just getting these crews dialed in. Biko giving her the gas. Brian Branker, Richard Phillips. This is a two-pope battle as both of these boats have now cleared all four heats and are working their way across the Atlantic Ocean. They're into the Maracas Bay, and Jason, you can see the crowds on the beach. They are packed in there like sardines. Let's take a closer look at Team Bico 3 in the modified max class at 120 miles per hour. Richard Phillips, our driver at 40 years of age, the project manager, and Brian Branker, the throttle man at 59 years old. Taking a look at our current positions now, he's one, two, three, and four, and now starting to bottleneck around Maracas Bay. Well, the action is about to bust loose. Stay with us. More powerboat racing. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Roger Pig along with Jay Harrison here. The care of great race, and we're now looking at Heat 3, the Tardo family, Toyota White Heat 3, charging to Grand River where they're going to do a Shark 90. The back boat. Hero 3 out for the 8 count. Hopefully they can get that thing fired back up. 
And this is where it starts to get exciting as they start approaching Grand Rivera. They'll be doing a sharp 90. You can see all the spectator boats out in the containment area as extreme measures hard on the gas getting ready for the Grand Rivera straight across the Atlantic Ocean to the island of Tobago. Toyota White Heat 3 there, just passing Heat 1 and Wolverine X. This is where you really have to maintain a comfortable cruising speed and try and anticipate the impending water conditions. Well, I'll tell you, once they get to Grand Rivera, they will be doing a left-hand turn, a sharp 90, around one of our marshal's boats, and it is pure Atlantic Ocean from there as far as the eye can see to the island of Tobago. Here we go, another breakdown. The boys at the back of the boat, D25. This looks like a bit of outrageous problems, and hopefully they'll get fired up. But look at the Thunder M7. Yes, we are talking Mr. Solo just charging towards Grand Rivera. Mr. Solo with the modified Max Division at 120 miles per hour in our driver's seat. We have Keaton Charles, the throttle man Darren Marshall, and of course our navigator, the character Gio Cusco. Well, that is an all-star team, and boy, do they ever make themselves available to the public. Mobile down for the eight count. The engine compartment up. Mechanical problems. We told you earlier, the pounding on the Atlantic Ocean will knock the fillings right out of your teeth. But Toyota White Heat 3 comfortably moving along. You can see that that looks like ball and Todd there at the top of your screen. That's heat number one, heat number three, moving past the pack. Passing heat number one, closing in on heat number two. You see Toyota White Heat 3 just passing Maracas Bay. We should also mention each of these boats are outfitted with a GPS device that gives our crew every six seconds the exact position of their boat in between Trinidad and Tobago. In our superboat light division at a max speed of 80 miles per hour, we've got our driver Victor, throttle man Robert, and navigator Richard. The Tardo family, over 30 years of rich tradition in the powerboat racing community in Trinidad. No, they're uh, definitely a flagship team and uh, a feather on their cap with that Toyota sponsorship. Some big bucks into the performance action out here in Division 3 racing in the island of Trinidad. And a great shot of the MTI catamarans. $750,000 per boat. It looks like Bico 3, but that's solo at the top of your screen. Hard on the gas. A little bit of onboard action. Gino Fusco, the navigator. And look at the battle of the giants. The Atlantic Ocean throwing its best. These are seven-foot swells that are hitting the boats. And that's our eyes in the sky. Armando Cavaliero, head of production, up in chopper number one. A great shot. This is class one division racing at its best. MTI catamarans, marine technologies in industries, and 2,000 horsepower. Here we go on board Mr. Solo. You can see the rough ride they're experiencing today in Trinidad. Big air as Solo leading the pack. But, you know, we're getting a lot of emails in here about some of the celebrities that are involved with the Iceman Powerboat TV. And I got one coming right up. All heats are now making their way along the treacherous north shore of Trinidad, about to make that 90-degree turn to head to Tobago in the finish line. A strong contender here, not only on the air, but on the water. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Roger Piggott, the Iceman, along with Jay Harrison, the care of Great Race. And we are well into 100 nautical miles of Atlantic Ocean. This is our Class 1 featured boats here. Mr. Solo, RC Cola sponsored, top of your screen. And that is Bike 03. Richard Phillips and Brian Branker behind the wheel. These boats right now are doing 120 miles an hour. You can see Cho Solo over there doing the chime dance. And you've got to watch the waves because it will knock the fillings right out of your teeth if you're not trimmed out. There we go, some big air on Bico coming down hard. Out here is chopper number two, eyes in the sky, bringing you guys at home some play-by-play -play action. These guys are hard in the gas. It's been a long day. They've passed three other heats of boats, and they're well on their way to Tobago, and it looks like they're the leaders right now. 
Okay, and you can see Bico 3 leading the pack, but Solo just playing off on the flank. Let's throw it to Andre, our technical specialist, see what's going on. Guys, what can I say? The guy really says it here. We all are not on the Caribs. I'm going back to you now. I'm going to enjoy some on. Okay, thanks, Andre. I wish I was where you are, but M7 leading the pack right now as the MTI catamarans, and look at the air. Branker is pulling on British American insurance, and I'll tell you, the G-forces in these boats, I was out on a test drive on one of these boats. They put a $50 bill on the dashboard of the boat and said, Iceman, if you could stretch and grab that money, it's yours. And I was pinned so far in the back of my seat, I didn't get the money. Well, we're getting a lot of emails about the other stops on the Iceman tour. So let's bring it into the British Virgin Islands. Well over 80 boats. There's my favorite, Big Pimpin'. Never enough action. Let's see what one of our competitors has to say. Hello, I'm Richard Branson, and uh, here we are in the most uh, be beautiful part of the world, the British Virgin Islands. Um, I'm very lucky. I have a tiny little island here called Meta Island. And uh, once a year, we have this wonderful race, um, all, all in good spirits, um, these big monster of boats that uh, roar on ahead and then we come up in the rear in uh, slightly more reliable boats. Um, but anyway, the main point of the race is um, you pick a card every time you come to a stop. My first poker card was not exactly the best, but uh, you never know. It's uh, a good start. Well said, Richard. But well, right now, let's have a look at the race action out here. Well over 80 boats. And what we're doing is in this race, we're starting them all off at once. It's a massive start. It's a nightmare on Elm Street. All divisions are not only racing against each other, but it really doesn't matter who is the first boat. There's my favorite, Big Pimpin', just hard on the gas at a nice buck 53 miles an hour. Moving right along, a popular stop on the U.S. portion of the tour is in Puerto Rico, and you can see some of our security guys. The venue is the Ponce Fishing Club, and there's some of the crowd. Once again, capacity only. Now, the Iceman setup team, we're very hard on the navigation of the course. We're working with all levels of government, U.S. Coast Guard, Marine Services. There is more networks in 46 different countries airing this stuff and right now David Baird our director of operations on board Coast Guard 1 just making sure that the Iceman course is in effect. Department of Natural Resources everyone's there but the crowd standing room only the Puerto Rico Invitational a five-year absence until Iceman brought it back to Ponce and here we go Marina Coastal Azul being followed closely by Unlimited Marine, and here we go, the Iceman's pick, Contro, partying with these boys after, and you can't drink too much of that stuff, you see God like that. Okay, the inshore action was uh, stellar. These boats can turn on a dime. They go around these marker boys at 90 miles an hour. Now here's a good look, it's a single outboard, they can't do much more than an 18-inch swell. Moving right along, we're now into the U.S. Virgin Islands, and I love this action over here, the Marine Patrol. We had a big party over here, the Coast Guard, the U.S. VI Port Authority, everyone strutting their stuff. Here's a little bit of our water rescue demonstration put on by the U.S. Coast Guard, and if you see the bait driving that chopper there, she could pick me up anytime. The crowd is just packed on the beach, and uh, this is where we're featuring the inshore boat. Here's some of the big gunners, and uh, we'll see them later. But right now, it's inshore action in the harbor. Now, you see that cruise ship back there? 5,000 people couldn't wait to get off that boat and plant themselves on the beach to see a bit of this action. Safety is key with us. All right, Iceman, let's take it back into race action. We're in Trinidad now, but not for long as all boats are now headed towards Tobago for the final lap around the finish area. Well, Store Bay, this is where the crowd really pack in. Now, our MTI cats, that's Solo leading M7, M10, Bico 3, not far behind. I think these guys are playing with each other. Some big air on Bico as he isn't trimmed out. We're on board, and that's what they're seeing in there. Where are your depends? 
And this is racing at its best. Look at them blow by some of those other boats at 120 miles an hour. And this is where it's really grueling. Bike will blaze there, eating a bit of dust. But I'm looking at the eyes in the sky and look at this shot here from Armando. M7, they're working towards Store Bay. The last of heat number one, two, and three. That could be Rage up front, one of the top performers in that self-sponsored vessel. We've got helicopters all over the place. It was Rage, C1. C1 means see you later, dude, as the big guns are now moving to the front of the pack. Stay with us, the winner's circle coming up next. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's the Carib Great Race, the Caribbean Offshore Championship Series. Roger J., the Iceman, along with Jay Harrison. We're now in the finish area. Store Bay, Tobago. You want to see what 20,000 people on the beach look like? Join us the third week of August every year. Here's our leader right now, unofficially, entering into the finish area. You can see on our chart two quick loops around the triangle. That'll bring in the checkered flag and give us today's top honors. Listen to the thunder on the Atlantic Ocean. This is a grueling course. You can see our containment area. Hey guys, don't be inching out into the course. You get T-boned at a buck 20. Here we go. It looks like a clear-cut victory for Baiko. The first time in 13 years that he's beating the on-camera Mr. Solo, and once again, 2,000 horsepower at the back door. These things are sucking gas like a bad habit today, and they're pumped. They see the crowd. The crowd are waving. You can hear it in the background. You can smell the ethanol in the fuel. Look at the rooster tail there. One and a half million gallons of water shooting out per hour, and the crowd just hanging on. Who's going to walk with it? Clear-cut victory right here as Bico 3, British American Insurance. Now, it gets complicated here because all of our helicopters are now coming into this area, and you can see all the pleasure craft, the containment area put together by the Coast Guard. Great shot here looking through the MTI catamaran. Bico 3, unofficially race position number one. Congratulations, could be breaking a 13-year history on this boat here, RC Cola, Mr. Solo, and I'll tell you, when you win 13 years in a row, we call you Mr. M7's what it's all about, the crowd just hanging on, you see the agony of defeat, and they are shutting her down as unofficially class position two, as they have just got knocked out of a 13-year victory. It looks like they're opening the hatch, getting some fresh air for the first time in well over an hour. But it looks like we have a problem, Roger. Well, I'm hearing on the communication equipment right now that there is a penalty. Yes, there is. Bico 3 missed one of the marker boys, and by default, it means Mr. Solo is going to win today's race, even though they came in second place. Pump it up, boys. What a way. You can see the party on the boat. And here we go, agony of defeat as Bico 3 clearly into the winner's circle. Missing one of the boys, they're going to have to settle for second place. Still, plenty of boats out on the Atlantic Ocean. Our Heat 3 divisional leader, C1, this is Rage, but who cares? All the attention is on this team here, Solo, as Rage is doing his final laps. And you can, hey, what do I smell in the air? Light that up, boys. Special thanks going out to all our fans and our uh, celebrity race team. And a big hello going out to Glenna Russell. Okay, here we go. Some more race action live and interactive as the smaller heats are working their way into to Store Bay, Tobago, and the nightlife party. Here we go. Bike will blaze another British-American uh, class position one, race position fourth, the fourth boat across and we will be doing the nighttime festivities well roger the party doesn't start until the last boat's finished and they're all starting to wrap up as team dynamite right formula is entering the finish area now yeah well dynamite right formula and here we go a victory lap you can see 
everyone standing on the cliffs. And boy, if you've got some cash, head over to Tobago. Uh, what a spectacular island. Ecotourism, no major commercialism. And the Hilton, when they were rocking over there, the Iceman's pick. Here we go, though, class position two. There's one of our eyes in the sky. Big thank you going out to all the government services behind us. The Tardo family, the arms up, they made it. And Toyota, a proud sponsor of this boat. White Heat three, race position six, class position one, one hour and 55 minutes. And here we go, Trans Brokerage One. It looks like Heat One is finally making their way to the finish area. And they'll come in seventh place overall, but first in their division. Two hours and 28 minutes compared to our top dogs doing it in just over an hour. Here we go, Extreme Measures, this side up. That boat flipped a few years ago, went right over on the capsize, and then they got funny and put a, a sticker on it that says this side up. They're in uh, class position too. Okay, here we go, SO Special Effects, a job well done by all the boats in today, and we're really honored to bring this action right into your living room. Race position 10, class position 1, everybody is shutting down. Team Intense High now making their way, crossing the finish line, they made it all the way to Tobago, 98 grueling miles, class position 2, race position 11, with a total time of 2 hours and 50 minutes. Well, a job well done. Here we go, Volantot, and this is the entry level. These are a couple of kids there. I'm surprised that motor made it across the Atlantic Ocean, but a job well done out there battling 12-foot swells in a fishing boat. Hero 2 not far behind in the same division, Pierogan Pleasure, 40 miles an hour. They made it across with a total race time of 2 hours and 58 minutes. That'll get them the class position of 4th place and 13th overall. Well, here we go. We should be having Wolverine coming up. Yes, we do. And uh, a great performance by this team. Uh, race position 14, class position 1 unofficially. Two hours, 49 minutes to do the 100 nautical miles. Well, a three hours and six minutes, Alien got a class position of four, race position 15th, and Candyman didn't think they would make it. You saw earlier in the show, race position 16, they had a breakdown early on in the race at the starting area. They got the machine up. Just a thumbs up job by Candyman. The modified max division, Mr. Solo wins it with an hour and 21 minutes, and Bico 3 in second place with an hour and 26 minutes. In our Superboat Light and Super Modified Divisions, Rage with an hour and 32 minutes, and Toyota White Heat 3 with an hour and 55. In our Modified Sports Division, Bico Blaze with an hour and 46 minutes, Dynamite Right Formula with two hours even, Esso Special Effects, two hours and six minutes, and Wolverine X with two hours and 49 minutes. Team Alien, three hours and six minutes, Team Candyman, three hours, 14 minutes, and Hero 3 and Mobile did not finish. In our Pleasure Sports Division, Extreme Measures, 2 hours, 20 minutes, Trans Brokerage 1, 2 hours, 28 minutes, and Outrageous did not finish. JOM, 2 hours, 42 minutes, Intense High, 2 hours, 50 minutes, Volantad, 2 hours, 57 minutes, and Hero 2, close behind, 2 hours, 58 minutes. Well, congratulations to all the race teams and my five girlfriends there, my entourage, the Carib girls. I'll be there shortly, sweetie. And listen, we got to thank everyone for watching. On behalf of Jay Harrison and myself, Roger Piggott, so long for now.